I was gonna start my talk today with a slow jam love song <laughs> dedicated to Sir Ken Robinson and Phil Hansen and the countless other TED visionaries whose speeches moved me, but I thought my slow jam skills were not up to snuff, so I figured I'd talk about something a little bit more personal. <sighs> a letter to my daughters. I have been blessed to be the speaker coach at TEDx Chapman U. And the secret is that it's because of two wonderful people, Shar Williams and Ruth Goodwin. I told her I'd embarrass her this way. <laughs> I want you, my dear darling girls, to never forget your friends. The other bit about being a speaker coach, the secret I don't tell my speakers, is that I learn far more from them than they do from me. And the big takeaway I tell them is that everything worthwhile has to cost something. So I am going to speak to my daughters. Dear darling girls, you will not remember me as I am today. When you recollect me, my hairline will be thinner, my bald spot will be bigger. This summer, has been a summer of vast change. After seven years of teaching in public education, I am leaving. Sorry. I don't know why. I was a good teacher. I did everything I could to be the best teacher I could be. But sometimes, it just doesn't work. I'm telling you this because I do not want you to be afraid of failure. I do not want you to think of failure as a bad word. We are living in a time, as you have all heard, of vast exponential change. And I, as your parents, am tasked with teaching you how to deal with a world that we know nothing of. So first things first. Do not create a fallback plan. Create a fall-through plan. When I was 15, I played Tevya in Fiddler on the Roof at Long Beach Jewish Community Center. It was an amazing experience for me. And after that show closed, I went back east and saw family and looked at colleges. One of the family uh, members that I saw was Uncle Al. And Uncle Al was dying of cancer. He had pain etched into his face. And so I think I gave my dad a little less of a hard time about singing for family than I usually do. And I sang, If I Were a Rich Man. And when I hit the lyric, when you're rich, they think you really know, Uncle Al's pain lifted from his face, and he smiled, possibly for the last time. I was hooked. I wanted to be an actor, I studied my butt off, I worked my butt off, I performed whenever I could, and eventually I landed in one of the best conservatory training programs in the world and found myself in New York. I even got to perform with these guys at the Oak Room of the Algonquin Hotel in front of Sheldon Harnick, one of the writers of Fiddler on the Roof. And you know what? It was great. But it wasn't everything I wanted, and that's okay. Sometime later, I found myself rehearsing a play in the aptly named Access Theater, which was a five-flight walk-up south of Canal on Broadway. The fight director told me he was moving to Tucson. I asked him why he was moving to Tucson. He told me because he wanted to go where they needed theater. This stuck in my brain, and I spoke to a classmate of mine in an acting class I was taking, and she looked at me and said, you're giving up. Never let someone else dictate your happiness. Darling girls, your mom and I did leave and move to the Bay Area, and I became a teacher in a place where they needed theater. It was challenging, but rewarding. Miranda, you were born during that time. Unfortunately, it didn't last. 
the district moved us from our campus and we lost many valuable teachers and administrators. But I was able to fall through because of my training into something that I loved. And I continued to teach for the next three years. Amelia, you were born during this time. Now I'm here. And I don't know what's next, except family, friends, and love. Sometimes you can do everything right, and it still doesn't work. You are going to encounter obstacles, young ladies. You are probably going to be in a classroom someday with this picture or something like it hanging on the wall. Thomas Edison telling you that he never failed, he just found 10,000 ways that don't work. That is not true. That is so not true. Thomas Edison failed. He failed and failed and failed. But the nature of that failure, how he dealt with that failure, determined his success. Do not let your failures set you back. Let them push you forward. To be clear, I am not talking about not studying for a test or doing an assignment. <laughs> this is something that I never, ever did, and I expect you to do the same. I'm talking about trying something so audacious, so outside the box, that it might not work. Unfortunately, we live in a society right now that is limiting your ability to do that, to learn how to do that, because teachers are telling you the world is telling you that failure is a bad word. Shoot, they're telling you average is a bad word. C isn't even an average grade anymore. Through grade inflation, the average grade has gone up to around a 3.0. So we're not even allowed to be average anymore, young ladies. We have to be above average. And it's not enough to be above average, now you have to be 4.3, 4.4, 4.5. And you have to get the best grades, to get into the best schools, to have the best life. Guess what? There is no such thing as the best. There is only the best for you. I had some students whose parents took them out of activities and sports they loved and put them into activities and sports that were deemed to be more beneficial for college admission. So great, these students are now playing a sport they don't like at a college that isn't a great fit for them. Does this sound crazy to you girls? I hope so, because if so, I'm doing something right. This is something that I used to teach my students. We have moved away from the simple and difficult to the complex and easy. Think about this for a minute. Would you rather follow a detailed set of instructions, doing every little step as intricately as possible, or provide genuine feedback about how something worked for you or made you feel eye to eye with a colleague? Would you rather undertake a gargantuan task of multifaceted problems or stand up in front of one, 10, 100, et cetera, people and tell them something truthful about yourself. This is the lure of the complex and easy. It takes us away from the simple difficult. When I was a prospective looking at schools, I toured UC Berkeley, and when I was at uh, Telegraph Avenue, I bought a shirt that said, Subvert the Dominant Paradigm. I have lost that shirt, unfortunately. I think somebody might have taken it because it might have been stained. But the message of that shirt has stayed with me and it allows me to say to you that I am a maverick because I believe in the power of failure. I believe that my failures are awesome because they help me get to my next success. My failures will never be as damaging as my successes will be important because my failures lead me on to my next successes. My successes are my students, my friends, my family, my wife. My successes 
are the roles I have played that have moved people, the lessons I have taught that have stayed with my students, the work that I have done to help others achieve their dreams. My successes are you, my darling girls. And so now, dear ones, I want you to do something profoundly difficult but incredibly simple. I want you to subvert the dominant paradigm, and I want you to ask why. Simply ask why about everything. And the answer cannot be because that is the way it always has been. The answer must be for the benefit of those we serve and who, those who come after us. Are we certain to make mistakes? Absolutely, but we will learn from those mistakes, and those mistakes will propel us forward to our success. I have always tried to parent you by one ideal. I cannot expect more of you than I do of myself. Right now I look around at our world and I see many people expecting and accepting mediocrity of themselves, unwilling to share their shortcoming and mistakes with others. I promise you, I will tell you when I mess up. I promise you, I will tell you when I have failed. I am doing my best and my best will get better. And in that way, I hope you will learn the power of failure. Love, Dad. <laughs>